Hey everybody, Nick with Frost CNC, and today I'm going to show you how to implement Hefala's axillo foot for installing frameless cabinetry. So you can see I've got a sample wall here, got my toe skins on the cabinets, and you can see I've got the machining in the bottoms for Hefala's axillo foot. So I'm going to show you how I got here, and just for clarification, in the video, when I reference a third foot, I'm referencing a th third set of feet. And when I reference a fourth foot, a fourth set of feet. Uh, so as you watch the video, that will become clear. Let's do it. All right, so before we get started, make sure you press the subscribe button down below. I've got weekly content planned and hopefully getting to uh, twice a week. Uh, putting out tips and, and tricks for uh, Mosaic users. And so for today, uh, I've got a wall of cabinets here. We'll go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, what I'm going to implement is Hefala's axillo foot. Uh, you can see I don't have any support here, no toe bases. Uh, and I'm going to show off a template uh, that I made, show you how to use it and how to make your own. Uh, or you can simply use the one I've made and how we can implement that foot in a really effective way uh, on several types of cabinetry. You can see I have a gang built frameless unit here. I've got more modular individual boxes here and also a tall unit and we'll show how to uh, use it on all types. Okay, so for those not familiar, here's the foot. It's essentially a uh, mounting block and a the actual foot part uh, and an adjustment tool uh, to uh, adjust the foot up and down. Uh, what's cool about this is that the adjustments made out front of the cabinet, so you're no longer on your hands and knees uh, adjusting feet, uh, and really sturdy. It really is a cool product. Um, and so in order to mount the block on the bottom of the cabinet, you can see here we've got essentially four uh, press fit holes that I'm going to put in the underside of the cabinet or in the bottom of the cabinet. Uh, wherever I want a foot. And so the template that I made simply uses this data here. Uh, again, feel free to make your own or use the one I'm about to show you. Um, but what I'm going to again, what I'm going to do here is get these four holes uh, for us to place the foot. Now, I'm going to make a few parameters to do that. We're going to go to settings. I'm going to go ahead here and go to edit. And I'm going to go to other, and I'm going to add some parameters that are going to help me control uh, how these feet get implemented. So the first one I'm going to add, we're going to call D tab or the distance in uh, for the tab part of the foot. And I'll show you the foot in a second to make sense of that. Distance in from end for foot placement. And I'm going to end up setting that to a 16th, and I'll show you how this is going to work. So if I pop back over to the foot, you can see in this dimension, it's got kind of this, this tab sticking off the side. And that's actually for the end of the cabinet to sit on. And then these holes are actually in the bottom of the cabinet. And so the parameter I just made is going to control how far in from the end this tab end sits. So in other words, right now, this is going to be a 16th inside the end of the cabinet. That way, if I butt two cabinets together that both have feet, the feet don't hit, right? So the foot is actually inside the cabinet by a 16th of an inch. Pop back over. The next one I'm going to make is I'm going to call it AX in or axillo in. And this one is going to be the distance in from rear of cabinet or back foot, we'll say. And this is really the only way to control kind of how far in from the back uh, that rear mounting block gets placed. So we'll go ahead and start at one inch, but we'll be able to change that and see how it goes here. Now, what's really gonna make this cool is I would like the option to add a third foot or a fourth foot uh, as I needed them in a gang-built cabinet. 
And so I'm going to actually add parameters to do that too. So I'm going to go ahead and add one. And we're going to call it add three or add third foot. And we'll put that in the description. Now, instead of number, I'm just going to make that a yes, no option. I either want a third foot or I don't. So we'll go ahead and press yes, no. There it is. And we're going to leave it defaulted at no. Now, when I add that third foot, I want to be also be able to control where that foot gets placed. And so I'm going to make a parameter here and we're going to call it dist three or distance for the third foot. And we're going to do it from the left as you're looking at a wall elevation. So we'll go distance from left to place third foot. And we'll just put a placeholder in here because really if we add the third foot, we're going to be able to change this number uh, for every cam that we add the third foot to. Now the template I've made actually has a fourth foot too. And so we'll quickly add the option for a fourth as well. And that again is a yes, no option. There we go. And then a distance for that fourth set of feet as well. Distance from left or fourth. And again, we'll just need um, a placeholder. I'm actually gonna change that to match this. Just to keep it neat. Okay. And again, just a placeholder number that we will change uh, when we need it. So there we go. Those six right there, you're gonna need typed in just that way to use the template. Uh, and let's go see how it works. I'm gonna go ahead and press save as here, save that. Okay. So the template, uh, much like the X series video, if you haven't watched that one, go watch that one as well, uh, is going to be a panel fastener template. So I'm gonna go here to hardware and fasteners and part templates. And this one is Axillo press in. And so you can see here what appears to be a mounting block pattern on the bottom already. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and press edit. Now this is on the underside of the bottom and so we'll have to flip this part over. And there they are. So let's take a look at the pattern we've got here. So we'll start with one of these. So this is the rear of the cabinet and the first hole in. And you can see Essentially, we're calling on some of the parameters we just made. So distance in from the end. And then all of this data really comes back to this chart here and where to place the four holes for each block. We'll try and keep this video a little shorter. We're not going to go into all of that, that math, but uh, feel free to reach out if you are trying to make your own. I'm happy to help. So there's most of them. You can see essentially that pattern is there. Now, you can see we're not having a third or a fourth foot yet. And really they're in here, you can see they're hidden. So if I click here, the hole is gone, but that's because it only turns on if add three is clicked over to yes. And so when it's clicked over to yes, then this item is unhidden or this hole and these locations for the third foot show up. If I do the same here, you can see I've got holes for a fourth foot to show up uh, and use. So pretty cool template. Let's go check it out. Okay, so back out in my job, I'm actually going to turn the foot on for the entire job. And so I'm gonna do that here by going to edit on my construction method. And I'm gonna go to fasteners and I'm actually going to turn that panel fastener template on for the whole job right here. So every cabinet in this room gets the feet. Go ahead and press save as. Okay. So let's go out and look what we've got. Go to products. Here's my wall of cabinetry. 
go ahead and get rid of the floor and show operations. And there they are. So you can see the modular individual boxes each get a set of four feet. You can see our tall cabinet gets four feet. And you can see our gang belt cabinet also gets four feet. And this is why I made a third foot and a fourth foot. And so now on this gang belt, I can actually add it right where the partitions are for extra support. So let's go into that cabinet. Go ahead and go to edit. Put this over here so we can see it. There it is. Okay, so let's go to parameters and we're gonna bring in some of the parameters we've made. I'll actually bring them all in and show how they work. You would only need to bring in add third foot and the distance and add fourth foot and the distance if you wanted a fourth foot, but we'll go ahead and bring them all in here. Okay, so before I add a third foot, you can see if I change this, you can see that our foot is gonna come in a little further. We'll go ahead and make it extreme so you can see it. But that's how you can control essentially how close the block gets to the end of the cabinet. Again, I just want it barely inside the end of the cabinet. And then we have some control on the rear here, how far in from the back that block is placed as well. And so one consideration there is you really want to kind of coordinate that with your pilot holes. You can see I'm a little close here, maybe a little more room. That way you don't hit uh, the screw going through the side there. All right, so um, before we get to third and fourth, one more thing is this front is actually tied to toe recess. So if I go here and use the toe recess parameter, I can actually change where that uh, front block goes. You can see that block moves back. So essentially tied to your to already existing toe recess parameter. I can change that back to normal and there it is. But let's add a third foot. I'm going to go here. I'm going to click yes. And there it is. Now, obviously, it's not on the partition because our placeholder number here says eight. And so let's figure out how we place that. If I go to the interior, I can figure out that this opening is 23. This end is roughly three quarter. And half of this partition is three eighths. So 24 and an eighth should do it. If I go here to 24 and an eighth, you can see now my third foot is centered right on my partition. Let's quick do the fourth foot. Go ahead and put yes. There it is at 16 inches. If I go here to the interior, I'm 24 and an eighth to here, 24 and a half to here, essentially 29 here. Uh, so what does that get me? 44 and a half, 53 and a half. Well, 53 and 7 eighths should get me close. And there it is. So same template works great on gang built cabinetry. And also on more modular cabinets, you can see there they are. Now, if we want to cover them up with a toe skin, we can go ahead and use the molding tab and automatic mold toe skins, uh, just like you normally would. And there they are. When we pop back over, take a look. I'll turn them on. And there you go. You can show your customers a finished toe, but really you've got the machining for your blocks ready to go. You can get this template at frostcnc.com and we'll see you on the next video.